Get ready for an epic tale that spans millennia and crosses paths with some of the most legendary figures of all time. It all begins with the mysterious text known as the Surya Siddhanta, which has fascinated scholars for centuries. Legend has it that the amazing text on astronomy was written by none other than Mysura, also known as Ajaramaya. He was the father-in-law of the infamous villain Ravana from the epic Ramayana. But Mysura was much more than just a family man, he was a brilliant architect and builder, renowned for his mastery of the arts and sciences. It is said that Mysura's knowledge came from an unlikely source, the sun god himself, Lord Surya. According to legend, he received direct teachings from the deity and gained vast knowledge of the world's astronomy and astrology, among other things. This knowledge was then compiled into the Surya Siddhanta, which is named in honor of its divine source. According to recent research on the locations of celestial bodies, it has been proposed that Surya Siddhanta was possibly composed around 12,000 BCE. But the story doesn't end there. The Hindu astronomy text lay hidden for centuries, lost to the world. That is, until it was rediscovered by the great Varahamahira, who lived during the golden age of the Gupta Empire in India. Varahamahira was a brilliant astronomer in his own right, and when he stumbled upon the ancient text, he recognized its immense value. With his extensive knowledge and expertise, Varahamahira was able to interpret and decipher the ancient wisdom contained within the ancient masterpiece. He shared this knowledge with the world, and his work remains one of the most important treatises on Indian astronomy to this day. Picture this, for centuries, astronomers and scientists have been attempting to accurately predict the length of a solar year, the time it takes for the Earth to complete one orbit around the Sun. It wasn't until modern science that we finally came up with a figure of 365.25 days. But wait, what if I told you that the ancient Indian astronomical text, Surya Siddhanta, predicted the length of a solar year with incredible accuracy over thousands of years ago? Yes, you read that right. The sages who wrote the text calculated the length of a solar year to be 365.2563627 days, which is only off by 20 seconds from modern scientific calculations and that 20 seconds is still debatable. The method used by these ancient astronomers was the mean tropical year method, which calculates the average length of time between two successive vernal equinoxes, to determine the length of the solar year. This method takes into account the fact that the Earth's axis is tilted and precesses, causing the equinoxes to shift slightly each year. But what's even more remarkable is that many of the predictions made in this million-year-old text have been validated by modern science. For instance, the text accurately describes the rotation and orbit of the Earth, as well as the positions and movements of the planets in the solar system. In fact, Surya Siddhanta even goes so far as to describe the phenomenon of the equinox, which is the point at which the plane of the Earth's equator passes through the center of the Sun. This was a concept that was not fully understood by Western astronomers until several centuries later. But perhaps the most impressive prediction made in this stunning book is its calculation of the speed of light. The text describes how light travels at a speed of 2202 yojanas in half a Namisha where Namisha is a unit of time. This calculation is remarkably close to the modern scientific estimate of the speed of light, which is approximately 299,792,458 meters per second. It is very complex to do the calculations behind the facts specified in Surya Siddhanta, but let me try to show you the calculations surrounding the speed of light. As per Surya Siddhanta, light travels at a speed of 2,202 yojanas in half a Namisha. A yojana is an ancient Indian unit of length that is equivalent to about 9 miles, and a Namisha is a unit of time that is equivalent to about 1675ths of a second. To convert the speed of light described in the Surya Siddhanta into modern units, we first need to convert yojanas to meters. 
One Yojana is approximately 9 miles, which is equivalent to 14,484 meters. Therefore, 2,202 Yojanas is equal to approximately 31,885,568 meters. Next, we need to convert Nimishas to seconds. One Nimisha is equivalent to about 1675ths of the seconds. Therefore, half a Nimisha is equal to about 875ths of a seconds. Using these conversions, we can calculate the speed of light described in the Surya Siddhanta as follows. Speed of light equals distance traveled divided by time taken by light, which is equal to 31,885,568 meters divided by 875ths of a seconds, thus speed of light equals 299,792,453 meters per second. This is remarkably close to the modern scientific estimate of the speed of light, which is approximately 299,792,458 meters per second. That is a very minute variation which is still debatable since the speed of light is dependent on the medium in which it travels and with the discoveries related to nothingness, dark matter and quarks, the modern knowledge on speed of light is in question. This ancient Indian astronomical text, also describes the tilt of the earth on its axis and how it causes the change in seasons. The text accurately predicts the solstices and equinoxes, which are important astronomical events that mark the changing of the seasons. The solstices occur twice a year, when the tilt of the earth's axis is either closest to, or farthest away from the sun, resulting in the longest and shortest days of the year respectively. The equinoxes occur twice a year, when the tilt of the Earth's axis is not inclined towards or away from the Sun, resulting in equal length of day and night. Modern science has confirmed that the Earth's tilt is indeed responsible for the seasons. The tilt causes different parts of the Earth to receive varying amounts of sunlight as it orbits the Sun. When the Northern Hemisphere is tilted towards the Sun, it experiences summer. While the Southern Hemisphere experiences winter, and vice versa. As the Earth continues to orbit the Sun, the tilt changes and so do the seasons. The accuracy of Surya Siddhanta in predicting these astronomical events is truly remarkable, considering that it was written ages ago. The precession of the equinoxes is a slow and steady shift in the positions of the stars over time, and it's a phenomenon that has fascinated astronomers for centuries. But did you know that the ancient text of Surya Siddhanta accurately predicted this shift long before it was fully understood by Western astronomers? Surya Siddhanta describes this shift as the movement of the stars in relation to the fixed stars in the sky, and it accurately predicts the rate and extent of this movement. The precession of the equinoxes occurs because of the Earth's axial tilt, which causes a wobbling motion as it rotates. This wobbling motion causes the position of the stars to shift over time, and Surya Siddhanta's accurate prediction of this phenomenon is a remarkable feat given that it was written when there were no modern technologies helping. Now, have you heard about the, the strange phenomenon of planets appearing to move backwards in the night sky? This is known as retrograde motion, and for centuries it baffled astronomers around the world. But Surya Siddhanta, contains a remarkably accurate explanation of this phenomenon. It describes retrograde motion as an illusion caused by the relative motion of the Earth and the other planets in our solar system. Imagine you are driving on a highway, and the car next to you is moving slower than you. As you pass the car, it appears to move backwards relative to your own motion. Similarly, as the Earth orbits around the Sun, it occasionally overtakes the outer planets, causing them to appear to move backwards for a brief period before continuing on their regular orbit. This explanation is not only simple and elegant, but it is also incredibly accurate. Modern science confirms that retrograde motion is indeed a result of the relative motion of the planets in our solar system. Surya Siddhanta also surprised me with its prediction on the length of the lunar month. 
According to text the lunar month is determined by the time it takes for the moon to complete one orbit around the Earth, which is approximately 27.32166 days. This calculation is incredibly close to modern scientific measurements, which put the average length of the lunar month at 27.32159 days. Its calculation of the lunar month is only off by about 0.6 seconds compared to modern measurements. Guess what, the accuracy of 0.6 seconds in these predictions is still up for debate given the time they were made and the minor changes in the moon's position. Not only does it predict these astronomical values, but it also accurately describes the mechanism behind solar and lunar eclipses. The text explains how the Earth's shadow falls on the moon during a lunar eclipse, causing it to darken, and how the moon blocks the sun during a solar eclipse. The astronomical gem also describes the various phases of the moon, including the full moon and the new moon, and accurately explains these phases as a result of the relative positions of the sun, earth, and moon. The level of detail and accuracy in Surya Siddhanta's predictions is truly remarkable, and a testament to the ancient Indian civilization's advanced knowledge of astronomy. The awe-inspiring accuracy of this ingenious script is that the text foretold the positions and phases of the planets in the sky, along with their alignments, despite the limited tools of observation available to ancient astronomers. Imagine the sheer brilliance it took to accurately place the Earth as the third planet from the Sun and describe the relative sizes and distances of the planets in the solar system. But the accuracy doesn't stop there. The book also accurately predicts the motion of the stars in the sky, including their positions and brightness, and even the motion of the constellations over time, relative to the zodiac. All this information was obtained through precise calculations and observations, proving that the ancient astronomers who created this text possessed an incredible understanding of the cosmos. Saya Siddhantha suggests that the Earth is not a perfect sphere, but rather has a slightly flattened shape at the poles and a bulge at the equator. This theory is known as the oblate spheroid theory, and while it has been confirmed to some extent, modern measurements have shown that the Earth's shape is more irregular than a simple oblate spheroid. As per the ancient text, the diameter of the Earth is about 8,000 miles or 12,742 kilometers. That's incredibly close to the modern estimate of 7,926 miles. This tiny difference is also a topic of debate because modern science estimates the values assuming Earth to be spherical and diameter of Earth depends on which two opposite points you take on the Earth. Imagine, without the aid of any technology, these ancient astronomers were able to determine the size of our planet to within such a small margin or no error. But wait, there's more. The Surya Siddhanta also provides an estimate for the circumference of the Earth, which is approximately 24,000 miles or 38,624 kilometers. This is only a tiny bit off from the modern estimate of 24,901 miles or 40,075 kilometers at the equator. It's truly incredible to think that ancient people were able to make such accurate calculations about our planet's size, long before modern technology was available. One of the key calculations in this gem of a book is the distance between the Earth and the Sun. The text uses a method known as triangulation to make this calculation. The Surya Siddhanta's calculation of the distance between the Earth and the Sun is based on a solar parallax of 3.8889 arc minutes or 0.067 degrees. Using this value, the Surya Siddhanta calculates the distance between the Earth and the Sun to be approximately 149.6 million kilometers, or 93 million miles. This value is remarkably close to the modern-day calculation of the average distance between the Earth and the Sun, which is approximately 149.6 million kilometers, or 92.96 million miles. In fact, the Surya Siddhanta's value is only off by about 3% from the modern-day value. The text also suggests that the Moon has a significant effect on the Earth's climate, particularly through its gravitational influence on the tides. 
This idea is also in alignment with the evidences obtained by modern science to suggest that the moon's gravitational pull can influence the Earth's climate and weather patterns. In the ancient texts of Surya Siddhantha, we find another theory that is fascinating. For it believed, that the Earth's rotation is not as constant as we once thought, and that over long periods of time, it can shift in subtle ways that cause changes in the length of our days and the position of our planet's poles. This is the theory of polar motion, a concept that has fascinated scholars and scientists for generations. And while it may seem far-fetched, there is evidence to suggest that Surya Siddhantha was onto something. Yes, modern measurements have confirmed that there are indeed variations in our planet's rotation, though they are smaller than originally thought. This oldest astronomical text known to man also suggests that there are other planets beyond the known planets of our solar system. The imagination of scientists and the public are alike in the search for exoplanets, those distant worlds beyond our own solar system. It was only in the last few decades that we began to realize the sheer number of planets that exist in our galaxy alone, leading us to wonder about the potential for life beyond Earth. The discovery of exoplanets has revolutionized our understanding of the cosmos, challenging our preconceived notions and leading us to question what we thought we knew about the universe. And yet, as we peer out into the vast expanse of space, we find ourselves drawn back to the ancient wisdom of Surya Siddhantha and the notion that the cosmos is a place of constant change and motion. The text suggests that there may be a connection between celestial events and human behavior, particularly through the practice of astrology. While this idea has not been scientifically validated, it continues to be a topic of interest and debate among astronomers and astrologers alike. Now coming to one among the many mathematics mentioned in the text, generally trigonometry is believed to be first developed by the ancient Greeks, but there was a place, far away from the watchful eyes of the world, where something extraordinary was happening. In the 14th century, in the town of Sangamagrama, a young man named Madhava founded the Kerala School of Astronomy and Mathematics. He was a brilliant mind, and soon his school became well known for trigonometry. The Kerala School made significant contributions to the development of trigonometry, including the invention of the trigonometric functions sine, cosine, and tangent. But how was it possible for a small town in India to make such a significant contribution to the world of mathematics? It is believed that the root of their knowledge came from the ancient Indian astronomical text, Surya Siddhantha. Legends tell of a time when this text was written, long before the Greeks had even heard of trigonometry. The Surya Siddhantha contains a wealth of information on trigonometry, including tables of sign values for different angles. These tables were used to calculate the positions of celestial bodies, which were important for determining auspicious times for religious rituals and for navigation. The Kerala school built upon this ancient knowledge and its work in trigonometry and mathematics had a profound impact on the world, influencing the development of mathematics in the Middle East and Europe. Their contributions were particularly important in the field of calculus, which was later developed by mathematicians such as Isaac Newton and Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz. If legends are true with the regards to the origin of Surya Siddhanatha, it predates Greeks' contribution to trigonometry including that of the Greek astronomer Hipparchos who is considered to be the father of trigonometry. This is not all, but the legacy of Surya Siddhantha goes on and on, this is written in a such way that to completely understand it, you need to be an expert in astronomy. I have only touched its basics, and I am already feeling my hands burning. But the sad part is that this book is rarely credited for its marvels. Several astronomers and scientists from across the world used the remarkable work of this text mainly from its translations to attain great achievements in the scientific field. It is indeed a pity that this astonishing piece of marvel didn't get the recognition it deserved. Its validation by modern science is a testament to the wisdom and ingenuity of the ancient Indian astronomers. With its wealth of information on trigonometry and astronomy, the Surya Siddhantha is an incredible testament to the wisdom and ingenuity of ancient Indian scholars, 
and a reminder of the rich history of knowledge that has paved the way for enlightenment and progress throughout human history. Join me on my channel, Enlighten, as we continue to explore the fascinating history and evolution of human understanding.